Uh, <laughs> right, so, uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening, yeah. oh. Hello, Glastonbury. That's something else I wanted to do. Um, right, you all know why you're here tonight, hopefully. Um, what I want to try and do is actually pass on uh, some of my story over to you, uh, which most of you know. Um, but it's actually, there's been a bit of a journey from where I've come from to where I am now, and there's been quite a few people involved in that. Um, so I'll just carry on and waffle on until you get bored. Um, so I'll, there's going to be a few thank yous as well. You're going to have to humour me through that part. But basically, October the 7th, 1996, at midnight, I received a knock on the door. Actually, you can read the rest, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not telling you anymore, that's it, you can read it. So, so just, just over 21 years ago now, I was the victim of a brutal knife attack. Uh, a couple of guys came on the, knocked on the door, uh, stabbed me over 20 odd times, um, in a, a violent attack, in a case of mistaken identity. Um, basically, it was a professional hit that went wrong, clearly from my point of view it went wrong. It was either wrong house, wrong guy, both, we don't know. But that was the beginning of a very, very long and painful journey. Now, what I want to try and do this evening is actually take you through part of the story so you understand what's going in there, but I'm not going to give you the end, because it's actually a good evening. So, what the story is going to do, it takes you through, number one, the stabbing, and it goes through in finite detail in the actual stabbing, and stuff that I haven't thought about since the stabbing is actually in the book. So that's, that's the first part. Then it's going to take you through the recovery period after that and the impact it had on people around me. And then after that, it's going to take you through some 17 years after where I had a massive mental breakdown. And I can assure you, the breakdown was worse than the stabbing by a million miles. And there's a few people here tonight, Yvonne, we've got people from Victim Support, people from Mind, who will understand that exactly, what I'm talking about. I'm going to have to have a drink. Not, be not because not because I was getting emotional, it's because I'm an alcoholic. Is that in the book at all? That's in the book. That's my AA book, that's the next one. So, there were several reasons for writing the book. One of them was, um, I want to take a few quid off you. Um, the mo most important one was actually, it was the timing of it. Uh, a couple of years ago I joined a company called Hilti. My governor's here today, so I've got to behave myself. So, um, and there's a few other people from Hilti. What Hilti allowed me to do was actually become myself again. And by that I mean working for a company that gives you work-life balance, which is something I never thought existed, is actually real. And that gives you a bit of free time for yourself. So my handicap's come down on the golf, and I've wrote a book. <laughs> so, oh, I didn't say that, sorry Governor. I don't really keep the, gl the clubs in the van. So, writing the book as well was as you can imagine, it was emotionally draining. So I've shed many, many tears writing it. I'm talking about stuff that I hadn't even thought about myself from the stabbing. So the stabbing part of it, I'm going through all of that in the book, in the detail, but while I'm writing, it's drawing everything out of me, as much as I could possibly put in the book, so you understand what I went through. No mobile phones, please. So <laughs> the impact the book's had on me writing is actually something that the Americans call closure. Now, with closure, that sort of puts things to bed for you. And if there's anybody in here who's ever suffered any form of mental health, or understands anyone that's actually been through mental health, closure's a massive thing. Now, something I didn't believe I actually needed until I wrote the book. It wasn't until I wrote the book and finished the book that then I realized I've just got closure. So thank you for the Americans for that saying. <coughs> so, Donald Trump is here now. So, now, in all fairness, as much as this has been a massive journey for me, I've not done it on my own. There's been people around me, there's been the charities I worked with originally, um, there's been family, friends, work colleagues, that have all helped me through this. So what I want to do, and this is where I want you to just humour me a little bit, I'm going to thank a few people. I'm not giving out flowers and all that old crap, I ain't got time for that. So <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to be saying a few thank yous, and hopefully these people know that I actually mean it. So what I'd like to do is I've actually got to give one award out, all right, and the award for the uh, best parents goes to my mum and dad. Aww. There isn't a prize. Um, let's get rid of this crown. So, now the thing is what people need to understand is 
Um, those of your parents in the room, you'll understand that it's not just me that got stabbed. It might have been physically on the night, but personally it wasn't. There's many, many people that suffered, especially my mum and dad who are there now. You're not going to start crying now, are you? You'll wait a little bit. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but the important thing is, what, what I want to try and get from this book is actually positivity. It's important for everybody to understand that actually I've come out the other end. And what I want other people to do is actually come out the other end with me. So when you look up here now, Mum and Dad, obviously, yeah, it's I have skipped to the good bits. This is it, yeah. So fame and fortune awaits. <laughs> That's my singing get around. <laughs> I do need another beer. Um, so I'm going to thank these people. So thank you, Mum and Dad, for everything. And Mum and Dad support you in only way Mums and Dads can do it. You know, if if your parents are still about, there is only one way Mum and Dad can do it. So. Thank you to my mum and dad, by the way. So a round of applause for them. They are the best parents I've got. Right, next, I want to thank a couple of people who sort of go through not being recognised in all of this. And it's George and Shannon. Now, George was one years old at the time. Shannon's complained she weren't in the book. <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> but... But they've both grown into two very, very incredible people. And much of that is to do with Wendy. She's uh, done a decent job on parenting. Because quite frankly, I was talking myself out. So, um, yeah, so George and Shannon. <laughs> Can you be quiet over the back, please? So, uh, <laughs> and they, they are both now honest, hardworking, happy people. Well, happy when Chelsea and I'm losing George. So... Seeing these two grow up into the people they are gives us two, myself and Wendy, great joy. And for that, we are very, very grateful. Um, what I'd all like you to do after this, not to buy another book, unless you want to. Shannon's done the uh, Built My Website for me. So when you go on to darrenbarden.com, little pun, um, darrenbarden.com, uh, Shannon has designed all of that herself, got it up online, and the book's available on there as well. Not till tomorrow. Not till tomorrow. Right. So, George. George. <laughs> George's claims to fame. So, first of all, he'd like to uh, be thanked, and he's asked me this one, because um, no one ever actually thanks him from getting me home from the pub. And um, he has assured me there's a few stories he wants to tell himself. Um, but also, if you look at the book, the front cover was actually designed by George. Um, so, well done, George, wherever you are in the room. Well done, George. Are you trying to leave her? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, then, my auntie Kath. Where I've lost her. It's the, it's the spotlights, Kath. She's not standing. Um, <laughs> um, my auntie Kath took the trouble to write the foreword uh, in the book, uh, which, as I've said earlier, you know, if you're family and you're close to me, that you, there's certain things about the stabbing that are, that are hurtful to you, and only you will understand that. So for my auntie Kath to actually write this down and do the foreword in a very professional way, um, as, as well as being sort of uh, family orientated through it, but getting the message across. Um, she's done a great job. When you read the book, you'll, you'll appreciate the forward in there. Um, now, Kath's claim to fame, and she doesn't like to talk about this, is the fact that she was actually clinical nurse 2017. Um, and the reason we actually asked her to go in the book was because she's the only person I know with letters after her name. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> and that's very true, actually. Um, there's four other people as well, and like I say, if I, if I haven't thanked you tonight, it's not because I don't care, it's not because I've forgotten you, it's because I've only got the hall till half ten. Um, <laughs> but there are four people. Um, Stuart Beck, wherever he is, is he still here or has he gone over? Oh no, he's going to go to Yorkshire. Um, these, these four people that I'm going to name now are, are friends, but actually more family, and probably in some cases closer than family and they've always been there. Whether they knew it or not, and how much it was appreciated, I don't know, but certainly these four people are very, very important to me, Wendy, and both George and Shannon. To Stuart Beck, Debbie McGee, that's the uh, real Debbie McGee, um, Peter Dench, for, I'll keep our stories quiet, Pete, and Rob Hurst, just for making me laugh on a golf course. That's not with jokes, that's his playing. I'd like to thank my sister as well, Teresa. Um, once again, you know, when something like this happens, when you take um, a stabbing or an attack or you're involved in something that's traumatic in your life, it has a ripple effect throughout the family. And 
what happened with my sister was she then took it upon herself to actually sort of channel her efforts and her emotion into helping, but in a sort of silent way. So I've done a couple of um, uh, TV appearances on Kilroy. Um, it's a bit like now, it's added 10 pounds onto me as it does on the telly. <laughs> this is uh, obviously doing the same. Um, but Teresa, Teresa went on and done that. And unfortunately what happens is, I was tied up in my own little world, um, getting over me, you know, the stabbing on my own. And, and Teresa just sort of went about her business, but it was, she was always there. You're always there with love and looking after us, but in her own way, which is fantastic. So it doesn't go unnoticed, so well done Teresa. <laughs> Um, more recently, over the last couple of years, um, I'd like to thank my work colleagues who are all here tonight. Um, and mostly because, as I said, you get a work-life balance and when you get a good set of work colleagues, you can get them in target, which allows you time off to write a book. <laughs> so, which is great. I keep forgetting my governor's here. So, uh, <laughs> um, so thank you to Hilwi and all my work colleagues that are here now. I'm not going to do the bit about twins, Pat, we're all right, okay? So, um, also, the charities. Now, there's three charities in the book. Um, one of them's victim support, and victim support have been with me from the very, very start. So, just after the attack, they were the first there. Um, and actually, some say they turned up quicker than the ambulance, um, but it was a Monday night. So, um, so firstly, I'd like to uh, say thank you to David Padgett for coming out of his way tonight. Uh, David, I don't know where you are at the moment. Over the back, he's over the back there. So David works for a great charity called Victim Support. Now Victim Support have got an issue because um, if we accept as a, a society that we need a charity called Victim Support, then actually we're accepting this bad shit out there. Um, and we don't like to do that. So Victim Support have a real tough battle on their hands, raising money from the government. Um, and back when uh, myself and uh, Ronnie Ayers, who's over there I'll talk about in a moment, were involved with victim support. There was actually 52 charities back then um, which were dedicated to prisoners, uh, criminals, families of criminals, and there was one for victims. Now, now there's there is several, but it's still way, way behind, and that's something we need to change in this country as well. I'm not going to do a political speech, all right, Joel? That's for you, mate. So, uh, yeah, so victim support do a fantastic job. If you're a victim of a violent crime, they're the ones that are there for you and they'll support you through the whole process, which they did for me very, very well. Um, going on, to, on from victim support now. Sorry, yeah, okay. Going on from victim support now. Uh, back then, there was a lady called Ronnie Ayers, who is over there for me, and her husband, Dennis. Hello, I'm, I'm sure you've retired now, Ronnie, yeah? <laughs> Maybe a couple of years, yeah? Um, as I said earlier, you know, friends and family, you, you can thank them all, but sometimes you need someone who sits on the outside of that, who can take an objective view and have a look at the situation. And Ronnie done that. Um, and Ronnie is probably one of the reasons, outside of the people I've mentioned, that I'm actually here today. And it was the early days that really mattered, going through the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board, as I did, it's something I talk about in the book as well. Um, I was the first ever case uh, to take the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board to a tribunal. Um, I lost, the government versus government, you're never going to win that one. Um, so, but Ronnie guided me through the whole process there. Um, it was a process that possibly no one in this room understands, or has been through. Um, but what it is, is basically there's a, there's a fund set up to uh, compensate people of violent crime, innocent victims of violent crime, which I was then done. So, uh, I went through the process, got treated like a criminal, uh, thrown out the door and they gave me two grand and told me to shut up and behave myself. Um, they were appalling. 20 years on, I'm hearing the same stories. I don't think that's right. That needs to change in this country as well. Joel, you're on a mission, mate, yeah? <laughs> All right, you've got a lot of work to do from tonight. So, victim support from 20 odd years ago to now, still supporting me and my family and now the book, which I really, really appreciate. So, victim support, thank you very much. And I want to say one thing for Ronnie, actually, with victim support. Uh, Ronnie came up with a phrase um, many, many years ago, and she used to say to me, Darren, you're not a victim, you're a survivor. And uh, today he's out. <laughs> that was that hard to say. Um, right, um, also, um, there's several charities now that are in sort of the forefront of the media. One of them is Mind, 
um, and in this country we're having a big push on mental health and as a fully qualified mentalist I'm allowed to say these things. Um, I'm not sure mine, sorry Steph, sorry. Um, so we have uh, Steph, Steph Mills here from Mind. Um, she works for one of the regional uh, charities within Mind, which is, and I have to get this right, um, Mid and North East Essex Mind, is that correct Steph? Yeah. Who, they do some fantastic work and it's, what they've done, they've actually put mental health at the forefront of number one, the country, number two, the government, and making things change. And that's what they're really trying to do and they're supporting people with mental health from five year olds up to uh, any age basically. And they do a really, really good job. And what Mind have done now, they've actually supported the book, which I'm really, really pleased about. So thank you, Steph. Hopefully they're not bored, Yvonne, by the time you know, I get to your bit. So, also here, this, this is a charity I've only just recently discovered. So, so, no, 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 so um, yeah, so Time to Change is a charity over here. The lovely Yvonne is, is here. Um, what Time to Change are trying to do is they're trying to change the perception of mental health in the workplace, in schools, in all sorts of environments, socially change how we feel about mental health. For me, it's more about how blokes feel. You know, being able to put your hand up and say, I'm a bloke and I cried. You know, you should be able to do that now. You should be able to say to yourselves, you know, look, I've got an issue. And we can't. We can't as a society. We hide it. Women do it better than blokes, to be fair. Um, but actually, as blokes, I find it, the more and more people I speak to, when I speak to them and say, listen, I suffer with depression. I suffered, not suffering. Uh, when I suffer with depression, I was alone. Very, very alone. And it, no matter how much support you've got around you, it's a lonely, bloody place, it really is. And what I want to try and do with Time to Change is actually change that so blokes can stand up and go, you know what, I've got a bit of an issue, I need someone to talk to. So Time to Change, hopefully you're going to hear a lot more of them going forward. They work in conjunction with mine, is correct, Yvonne, yeah? So, and what I'm also going to do, I'm going to get um, Yvonne to stand up in a little while and just tell a little bit about Time to Change, a little bit more accurate, because I've only just discovered them, so they're fantastic. So well done, Yvonne and Time to Change. Now, um, getting the book complete, it's been a journey, um, and I, it has been a journey, I must admit, but I was fortunate enough, um, Wendy's boss Vic, who's here as well, who's also an author, I believe Vic, yes, you're not selling your book tonight mate, so, <laughs> he can't read either, I don't know how we do it. Um, so, actually, Vic received an email, unfortunately it went to the wrong email address, which went to Wendy's email address, and it was from a guy called uh, Richard, Richard McMahon. And it was just basically offering up a free book writing course. And um, Richard is here now with us. Talk fella, Baldy. As opposed to short fella, Baldy. So, um, yeah, so what happened was it was just purely free that actually Wendy received the email. She sent it on to me. He said, What do you think? I said, uh, Yeah, give it a go. It's free. Uh, being the cynic that I am, I, um, I didn't believe anything was free. Um, but it is. It's genuinely free. We do the, uh, he does the book writing courses completely free of charge. And it's something I'm, I'm so pleased I took up because, yes, uh, Richard's mentored me, but what actually he's done, he's given me the opportunity to free up and get rid of a load of demons, as we spoke about earlier with the closure. So it's, it's been a massive, massive impact on our, on our families. Um, so Richard, thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> oh God, now the tough bit. I, I'm going to have to do a beer for this bit. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, now the most important person. No, it's not me, I know. Um, you learn when you read the book, um, that basically I wouldn't be studying now. You know, I thanked everybody I needed to thank in the room, but as someone who's uh, gone through the story, um, closer than anybody else, seen the darkest days. Um, and when I say dark days, bloody dark days. Um, yeah, so, um, there's one thing that this woman, Wendy, my wife, I don't know if you know your name, uh, <laughs> genuinely, um, the most supportive, uh, unbelievable person in the world. Um, absolutely incredible. With, without Wendy, I wouldn't be studying here now, um, because she really has actually saved my life in more ways than one. Um, <laughs> So, I'm not giving out anything tonight, I'm not giving out flowers, Wendy don't do flowers, she just kills them. Um, but, 
I actually, I actually think she does it deliberately when I do it. But there is uh, the one thing Wendy wanted um, was the very, very first book off the press. So I spoke to Richard and I said, uh, I need that to happen. So uh, Richard said, it's done. And this is it. Maybe ten are on the side. Ben, get that tenor off her. <laughs> so, um, and that's basically it. The idea is you're going to read the book. Um, well, you've got to buy the book first. Um, yeah, so buy the book, read the book, um, tell other people about it. Not because, I mean, yeah, obviously I want to sell a lot of books, that goes without saying. But um, what I want to try and do is actually help others. I do genuinely want to do give something back because I'm fortunate to still be here. Um, because, as I've said before, there were some very, very dark days which you'll read about. Um, but yeah, I want you to buy the book, I want you to read it, I want you to absorb the information that's in there and have a look around you because I think it's a known fact, uh, Steph, you bear me out, one in four people, one in four people will suffer uh, a mental health issue, uh, mental anxiety, mental illness, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. So, you know, there's quite a few of you in the room that need some help. I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I've been drinking with some of you. So, um, yeah, so... Anyway, without further ado, what I want to do now is get on my Facebook, get on the Instagram, share the life out of that, buy the book, tell everybody else about it, um, and then just do a bit of socialising and mingling, and that's me.